Welcome to the Optimal Bio Podcast. At Optimal Bio, we don't just balance your hormones, we balance your whole body. Our conversations range from nutrition to medicine with an emphasis on wellness tips to support your health journey. If you like what you hear, find us on the web at optimalbio.com and follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Thank you for joining another episode of the Optimal Bio Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Molly Baker, founder and CEO of Indie Consulting. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me. Excited to talk about all things wellness, fitness, but in the real world, you know, we talk about often so many people have a three hour morning routine, but most of us can't do that. So excited to talk about what your day looks like. Awesome. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. So let's start with a little bit of background of, you know, who you are, um, and then we'll jump into specifics. Yeah, sure. So um, as you mentioned, I am the CEO and founder of Indie Consulting. Uh, We're a digital marketing strategy and activation firm. Um, We do everything from answering big picture questions on how to best use your marketing to grow your business to social media management and paid media management, email marketing. So uh, all the fun things. And um, yeah, we're based between North Carolina and New York City. So I get the the pleasure of being able to spend time in both places. And my wellness routines look a little different in both places, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun. I love that. And what encouraged you to start your own company? Yeah, I always wanted to start my own business. I had like a flower watering business when I was younger and I ran summer camps when I was like 11, which is crazy that somebody would let an 11 year old like run a summer camp. Uh, and it was always something I wanted to do. I just thought I needed a product and I thought I needed to be 40 years old when I started it. For some reason, we put these timelines in our heads and I found myself in a place, um, where I was really drawn back to marketing services. I had spent some time on the agency side and then on the brand side and really was missing the services realm and had some thoughts of ways that things could be done differently and figured I would just go for it and kind of see what happened. And that was five years ago. So uh, it's been working out. I think it has. And we'll kind of jump into kind of like the what the work-life balance means um, in our day-to-day because as a business owner, I think you're going to you know be able to speak to what does that look like and how does wellness play a part in your everyday um, and how it helps you, I believe, be successful. Um, but you said, you know, in our minds, we have such like, oh, at 40, I can do this. At 50, I can do this. And really taking that away. And as many people know, I, I love Nick Saban. I think he is one of the best leaders, but, you know, everyone knows he's one of the best college football coaches. But the point is he started at Alabama when he was 55. So it goes back to you can figure out your career and be successful at any time. It's just putting in that work and staying consistent. A hundred percent. And if you want to go for it, you just got to go for it. It doesn't really, the rest doesn't matter. You're never going to be ready, right? You just have to do it. And that's how you learn. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I was saying this to someone the other day, no one's ever ready. And you think like, oh, but I haven't done X, Y, Z things yet. That would give me the knowledge to be able to do this. But there isn't a formula for that. So you just got to jump off the deep end. Exactly. And that's the best way to learn is by doing it and just having to figure it out because, you know, textbook, uh, you know, equation, it's like, but that's not real life and you have to figure it out. You're in the service industry, you have a team, you know, it's like real life things you have to figure out. So you mentioned your wellness routine looks a little different in each city. So kind of walk us through you, you're non-negotiable for a wellness routine, and then we'll kind of break it down like when you're traveling, when you're home. So I am addicted to movement. I like it's been an, an exercise for me to get to a place where I don't work out every day. Like I, it's 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 been unhealthy at points in my life, um, but I think when you have the right balance with it, it does bring so much. It's a stress reliever. It gives me a lot of mental clarity. It's a great way to start my day or end my day. Um, So that's a huge part of, has been a huge part of my routine for a very long time. Uh, But I think as I've matured and grown up and learned different things about myself and this space, 
having rest and introducing that into my schedule has been a game changer and it took a lot of work. I feel like I'm I'm weird in the sense of like I sometimes think people have the opposite problem and I need to like work on slowing down and taking those that those timeouts from time to time. And I think that's so important because I think we're told as a society and depending on it's just that we have to be go, go, go. And especially working out, you have to do it every day. You have to be short of breath. But then as like more studies come out, more people learning about, say, especially women's health and how we're supposed to work out is really realizing that rest is so important because that's when your body can like reset, recharge, build muscle. So you do come back stronger instead of just burning your body out. Totally. Yeah. And when I was post-college in my first job, I was living in New York City and I was like, okay, every day I have to get up before 6 a.m., make sure I'm running or in a workout class. And like there was never, that could never change. I was so rigid about it. And some days you would feel terrible. (laughs) You'd be like- Terrible. Yeah. What am I doing? I can't even like get through this run. And then you beat yourself up over that. So now, especially in New York, like my schedule looks so different every single day. Like maybe I work out after work tonight, or maybe I do something like much lighter today or take the day off and put more into my weekends where I have some more time. So I think just being more flexible about, to your point, like the ebbs and flows of life and your body and your schedule is so important. It is so important because you want something that's going to be lifelong, right? Not just you're doing it for a few months, because like you said, movement is so important to your health, physical health, mental health, like prepping you for a meeting. You need that movement. Uh, Like, you know, it's like depression, anxiety is rampant everywhere. Some of the best things to do is literally just to move. And especially like movement is going to look different for each person. Like walking. Walking is one of the best things for you. And I think people forget that. And then you're in nature. But, you know, I think we can talk over and over the importance of rest because it's, and like you said, it's an everyday reminder. Like we know we need rest. We know we need to switch up. Um, workout routines, but it's hard to fully think that like, it's okay to take a moment. And then when you come back, you're so much stronger in the gym. But like you said, like sometimes you're in class and like you're dying, not in a good way. Right. And it's like, well, why? Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, you talked about kind of your, like how it helps you, you know, with your energy, brain clarity. Do you think it, you know, how you're so successful, do you think it plays a part of kind of your focus on wellness as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think my I have my personal life and my work life impact each other so much. I think um I love running marathons and that's been a huge part of my past decade plus at this point. I think I've run like 10 over 10 marathons now. And that mental exercise, like I find now I find marathon running more about the mental work than the physical work and I think building that muscle literally as like how to push through hard times or like pitfalls or like when you're really down on yourself has translated so much into just more resilience in my business and my professional life as well. So I think they go hand in hand because when you're building a company, as you know, it's not, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not a 5k. It's like you're in it for the long haul and there's going to be some really rough patches. And how do you kind of like, push through those times to get to whatever that next destination looks like. I think they have a lot of parallels. Exactly. And like your brain is a muscle, like you say, like building your brain, I think people forget that. And so it's like, if there could be a rule at optimal by that you have to work out in the morning, whatever it may look like, it really does make a difference in your mood, how you show up. Cause like, wait, I already did that workout. Okay. And then you can be able to manage stress more, project, whatever may come in that discipline, like you showed up for yourself. So you're going to give yourself like that confidence that you may not even realize. Totally. And I am like, so nerdy about this. But I before I race, I I read like in the month prior before my race, I read a book about like, endurance training or like mental wellness for like pushing through hard things and learning some of those tips and tricks has been so cool. It's fascinating because physically we're capable of a lot more than we think we are. It's the mental capacity that ends up holding you back. So having like this full approach to running has been a really like, I just think interesting and cool thing. Oh, I love you. Might, you need to share those books with me. I don't know if I'll run a marathon, but 
I want to read those books. I know like, like small example, but whenever I'm at the gym, like the trainer will give me a heavier weight and then I can do it. I'm like, wow, what a lesson in life, right? I'm like, we can do so much and our bodies are so powerful, but our brain's so powerful. So it's like, how do we push through that? Like the top athletes, they have a whole team of like psychologists, counselors, like it is so mental uh, because there's so many great athletes, but then it's like that mental piece is what stands makes them stand apart. So you kind of talked about this, like work-life balance. So when people say work-life balance, what does that mean to you? Uh, I I mean, honestly speaking, this has been something that's been really challenging for me and I'm not perfect at it. Like I'm still trying to get it right. Um, but I think you kind of have to ride the waves a little bit. Not every day needs to be like full throttle or not every week needs to be full throttle because there will be those weeks where it's just crazy and all these things pop up that you weren't expecting. And that's just the nature of the beast. So when it is a little bit quieter, like I, I, I find myself being like, what's the next hard thing I can do? And it's like, can you not like, that's, that's not what needs to happen. And I think a lot of times work-life balance is looked at as like, okay, well, here's my week and I'm going to have X, Y, Z hours to myself and X, Y, Z hours for work. And like, doesn't work that way. Like you have to look at it in like years and the macro view of it, I think. Um, but it is, and, and find what works for you because I think everybody's different in terms of like how they relax and how they take down time and how, what they prioritize in their life that they want to do outside of work as well. No, I completely agree. Like when people talk about it's two separate things, I'm like, your life is one and you have to, like you say, you have to ride the wave and figure out that balance. It's going to look at different seasons, different times. But I think if you look at your personal life as once, work life is the other, you're not going to do what you want to in either because you're trying to just like end one when work blends into personal, personal blends into work, which I think is the beauty of life, but it's understanding that. And like you said, creating that, those structures, because each day is going to be different. So how can you handle those things? Totally. Yeah. My mom always tells me you can have everything, but you can't have everything all at once. So think about the seasons of your life and like be intentional about what you're choosing to prioritize in those seasons. And I try to keep that in mind a lot. Oh, hundred. I think those two things, like one, knowing life is full of seasons, whether it's a week season, a year season, like you're going to be able to get out of it. Um, And two, just being intentional. Like you have the, you can choose where you want to spend your energy. I think a lot of us just say yes to so many things that we don't have the energy to what, where we want to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of jumping into like your day, um, what does like your non-negotiables that you need to know to set up for a successful day for you as at work, but really you as a person? Yeah. So I, my my only like non-negotiable, my morning routine is I do try to drink water right when I wake up and that has been very helpful in my life. Yeah. Cause like I found myself getting to a place where like it's noon and I haven't had any water yet. And it's like, "Mm, it's probably not for the best. Um, but I typically, I do enjoy working out in the morning. So I do usually try to do that. But if I know I'm going to have I need to be in the office by seven o'clock and I'm going to have a slam day, like make the adjustments and do it after work Um, or look ahead at the week and make that your off day. So I do try to do that. Um, I read every night, like that's my way to decompress. So before I go to bed, I always read and I try to alternate between like something that's mindless and something that's like more educational. So ways that I can expand my mind. Um, But I think having that time is nice just to think about something outside of the standard things that you think about typically in your life every single day. I think people need to remember, because fitness is so important to schedule in your calendar, like it's a meeting, right? So like looking at your weekend, like, okay, I have to be at the office at 730 on Tuesday. I'm not going to stress like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to get a workout in. It's just going to be my off day. And that's fine. Um, because like, like what we were talking about before, we are so many of us are like, if you miss a workout, then like you, it affects you in a negative way when it should just, it should just be part of what it looks like. Absolutely. And I think I am a supplement girl right now. I tr- am trying to swap tea in for coffee more often and like do different herbal blends and things of that nature. Um, but I think everything is a work in progress. And like, I am constantly trying to test different things to see like, does this make me feel better? Does it make me feel worse? I 
like used to not eat a heavy protein diet. And now I eat a very heavy protein diet and how I show up now, like from an energy level perspective and just in my runs and workouts, it's night and day. It's made such a huge difference, but I know that doesn't work for everyone. So I think it's like having a test and learn approach to your own well-being, I think is really important. Oh, I think that's the biggest thing because we all are so different, but you got to try it. Like I always, I'm like, I'm test subject number one. I will try any, like most supplements, different things to eat, different things to work out because we do need those. And like, I was actually talking to someone earlier today, like since the fall, I've really been like, I need protein at every single meal because I would think back and be like, I don't know the last day, like I actually hit a true source of protein and you feel so much better in so many ways. It's just like, just like you, it's like, oh wait, we do need protein. Yeah. It's been interesting to see the pendulum swing on that because I feel like when we were in like high school, it was like meat is this like not good thing for you and you should only eat it in really small quantities. And now it's like, get as much protein as you can, like lean protein, fatty protein, like just go for it. So it's, it's been, it's always interesting to see how trends shake out, but if it feels good for you, I think you got to go for it. Exactly. It's like one, you need to do your own research because like once you do those research, it's like, Oh, those studies had many other things that people don't talk about, but two, like, how do you feel? Like, you know, your body, like I tell people, like I cannot eat spinach and kale on paper. Yes, they're healthy, but like, I don't feel good. So like, am I just going to keep eating them? Cause someone tells me it's healthy. So it's just like, I think we're just so inundated with so much information, but sometimes it's great. But then sometimes we just don't listen to ourselves. It's like, wait, and like, I don't feel good when I eat that. And that's fine. So I'm not going to eat that. So what are your top supplements that you take? So every day I take D, zinc, and a probiotic. And then I'll occasionally take like magnesium and throw that into the mix or a vitamin B and put that into the mix. Um, but those those three are really my go-to. And again, with like sort of testing and learning, when I introduced those consistently into my routine, I felt a lot different, especially with D from an energy level perspective and zinc from like an immunity perspective. Um, and I love a probiotic. I think it's like been game a game changer. So, you know, we'll stick with them. My fiance takes like literally like 800 supplements a day. And I'm like... <laughs> Maybe you're doing too much. I don't know, but I think you got to, you got to do what works. Exactly. And it's like, again, like people are like, do you need supplements? It's like, well, all of these supplements used to be in our food sources. So like our bodies were getting them and our body is needing them. Like you see like different illnesses, the amount of illnesses, diseases, like it's because our bodies are not getting the nutrients that we need. If you were going to a deserted island and you could only bring one supplement, what would you bring? Oh gosh, um, magnesium citrate. Oh, really? Yep. Yes. Okay, I'm kind of surprised. I know vitamin D. Everyone, everyone should take vitamin D. It's a hormone. It's very important. But um, I have a lot of gut issues. Like it's just been a journey and. Magnesium is like a constant that I started honestly pretty recently, like in the fall, and it's made such a big difference. Really? Yeah. Like people joke, like if you have an issue, take magnesium. Like it, there's like 500 different systems it helps within your body. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So huge fan of magnesium right now. And I think I, I like tell everyone, I'm like, are you taking magnesium? Like you should take it. Of course, after. I think foundational, like what you're like vitamin D and a probiotic, you have to because your gut connects to your brain, your body, it metabolizes everything. So if you're, you don't have gut health, you're going to have a lot of different issues and with our food. So vitamin D and probiotics, I think are non-negotiables, but yeah, take magnesium to my island. I love that. Yeah. What would you take? Uh, I mean, probably the probiotic. Yeah. For, yeah. Because I do feel better when I take it. Um, but I didn't realize that magnesium was so good for your, could be very beneficial for your gut. So yes. I need to get on that more consistently. It sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Tr look at magnesium glycinate or uh, magnesium citrate. Um, and also the sleep with magnesium. Like I don't have trouble sleeping, but when I take magnesium, like my sleep is sound, right? 
yeah, I have noticed that. I know I'm doing dry January, unfortunately, and I keep seeing this sleepy girl mocktail that's everywhere. That's like the magnesium powder and seltzer water and some kind of like fruit. Um, but I feel like I need that just to, you know, try it out. Yeah. Do you take um, colostrum? Have you jumped on that? I have not. I, I keep thinking about it, but I haven't pulled the trigger. Same. I ordered it. Like it's in my kitchen. Like it's on my counter because it's, it seems incredible. But there's I saw like a sleepy girl tea. It had like the colostrum, the magnesium, something else. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I listened to a neuro um, – a neuro pediatric neurosurgeon talking about the benefits of colostrum. And I was like, all right, I got to try this. Well, if you try it, you have to let me know. I will, you know, I'll, I always share. Um, You talked about um, drinking water, which is, I feel like step one for everyone. We all need to drink more water, but I started drinking electrolytes a few months ago. Cause again, everyone talked about the benefits of electrolytes what are your thoughts on electrolytes? So I'm a, an electrolyte fan. I feel like I can tell when I really need electrolytes versus when water's going to do the trick. And I was really dialed. Like when I'm training hard for something, I drink a lot of electrolytes. And then I kind of was finding that like, I just like that better than water. And I was like, all right, I got to rein it back a little bit here. Um, but I am a fan because I do think sometimes like, and I'm sure everyone feels this way. Like you have a certain level of like satiation where you're like, I think that's the right word where you're like, I am so thirsty, but water just isn't doing it for me that I feel like you feel so much better. Um, when you go to the electrolyte side, I agree. I've told so many people to get electrolytes because we need like salt is most of our body. People think it's water, but it's actually salt. Um, see, I started drinking a few months ago, but really started because one of my friends kept having like horrible stomach pains, was going to doctors and like, they had no idea. And then one day it dawned on me, I was like, I think you're like chronically dehydrated. Long story short, started drinking electrolytes completely fine. So I was like, okay, maybe I should also start drinking them, but it makes a big difference. Like, especially people who get headaches, you know, it could really make a difference instead of like just popping some Excedrin like I used to. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like once you know like how bad those medicines are, it's like, oh, maybe I should like use them sparingly. Yeah. Like you always like hear like how bad they are. But the other day I was reading some article about like the gut health. Like the I was like, wow, that's I feel bad for my middle school self that would just would just pop it, you know? <laughs> oh, I do. It's not good. So I love that you try to experiment. I think that's the best. Um, But like, how do you like learn more about health, fitness, medicine? I am a podcast listener. I've gone come over to the dark side fully on that. I have like a lot that I listen to now. And my family has, we have the family chat. There's always podcasts being shared. Um, So I would say that's probably my primary source of info around these types of topics right now, um, which I feel grateful for because like I used to like look at blogs, you know what I mean? Which isn't really the same and you don't usually know the source and it just feels like an an easier way to get a diverse set of opinions in the podcast realm. Uh, so I think that that's been a huge game changer versus just like going to Google or reading a blog that somebody wrote. Oh yeah. I'm fully on the dark side with podcasts because you can learn so much information and listen to people that you would have no idea, you know, existed or like why I listened to this pediatric neurosurgeon and I was like locked in. Um, So I think it's great. I think sometimes podcasts aren't social media, but it gets a bad rap as a whole. Like you can use it for for good and like curate what you want to learn. Like my Instagram feed is like all just like doctors wellness. I could just like see that to like try something different, see what works, especially the human body is pretty incredible and we really don't know a lot about it. So it's like, how can we keep learning about it? Yeah, no, for sure. And I think it's nice when someone's being interviewed and then you can then follow up and dig more into their information. Like so many people have published articles or books or have different content streams. And then you can go deeper if you want and determine like, is this something that I should give a shot to? Or does this feel not right to me? Um, I think that's like the cool part about how information is being distributed today. 
Oh, completely. And a lot of them like will link their sources so you can actually go see those sources. Are they, what are, yeah. So it's not just like, oh, you can listen, but not that follow up to actually see maybe more of the story or, you know, more of the behind. Um, I think it's, it's nice to have that transparency. For sure. What do you do? Oh, a podcast. I love podcasts. Um, because like we talk about, like you can listen in the car, on a plane, at the office. Um, and you can just like, there's anytime I listen to a podcast, I have no idea. Most times I don't know who the guest is going to be. And I learned so much. So it's like, how can you Google like some rant? And it's like, can be like the topic of the podcast, but like, oh my like, gosh, oh, sure, I'll listen. And I'm like, then I learned so much more than I would think. Yes, agree. And then also I, I do Google, I go down rabbit holes. I think because like one, I do work for, you know, a medical company. So like, that's part of my job I should know. Um, but, and then using me as my own, like, a hundred percent test subject. Like I will try different things um, because that's how you learn. And I want to feel the best I can. I want my brain to work the best I can. So I'm open to trying different things. Yeah. Yeah. No, it can be overwhelming sometimes though. Even with podcasts, like a year ago, I had a moment where I was, I felt like I was listening to so many podcasts with therapists and psychologists and like I started then like therapying myself and I was like, I am in too deep. Like Mm -hmm. I feel stressed because I'm listening to too much therapy talk. Uh I was like, I got to pull back and like diversify things a little bit. So it definitely, there is just like such an unbelievable amount of content that it's like a balance. Like we were talking about before, you got to find it. You got to find the balance. It's like, I listen to like, right. Like Kristen Cavalieri's podcast, like something light, right. You got to break it up. Um, even though she had a doctor on yesterday, which was great, but you know, make it lighter. Um, and do, and just take pieces at a time. I think it goes back to like, people might think like being healthy is so like so much to it. And it's like, of course, but if you just like build it day by day, then it just becomes part of your life. And then you're not like, oh my gosh, I have to take the supplements today. I have to go move. I have to eat well. It just like becomes part of you. Yes, 100%. And I know I can say this over and over, you do feel better, right? And like your health affects the relationship with you, with work, with your family, with your friends. I think we've all come so far, like everyone's kind of not feels good. So everyone's like, well, that's normal. Like you shouldn't feel like that. No, no, agree. It's not normal. It's not normal. Especially like when you like see people who are so working on their brain, so working on their health. I'm like, give me a piece of that. Like I always joke the top athletes have a whole team around them and they spend like a million dollars on wellness. It's like, we all can't do that, but how can we have our own team to feel best? Yeah. No, I like that. I think that's really smart. Hey, trying like Russell Wilson, he spends a million dollars, LeBron, but we'll, we'll make our own team, you know? <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. Yes. Kind of switching back to, you know, your, you know, your company, you leading that team and kind of talking about like you push yourself by, you know, running marathons. Um, How do you think some of those challenges have helped you become a stronger person? And, you know, do you think any of just kind of how like training and like having that discipline and working out has helped you go through those challenges? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's made a huge difference just in how I show up in my day-to-day life. And I like being out of my comfort zone now. Like that is something that I crave, honestly. So I'm much less risk uh, averse when it comes to business decisions because I like get something out of being uncomfortable. It's like, eh, yeah, this this doesn't feel great, but I'm just going to go for it anyway. And you can always course correct if you need to course correct. And I think someone was asking me the other day about like resilience and what does that mean? And and how do you do that in a business capacity? It's like, you just try. And if it doesn't work, then you make a different decision and you don't beat yourself up over it. You take a couple hours and then you move on. Um, So I think that that having some failures in things that I've tried to do athletically has just made it okay also to not always reach the target. Like it's going to be fine. But I will say I my mentality on this really has shifted in the past couple of years because because I was prioritizing like fitness first I was just so rigid about it as I mentioned and I think you have to have like to be healthy you have to have like 
synchronicity between the mind, body, and spirit. And I was putting body so much higher than everything else. Um, and I was putting in my business life growth ab- above everything else. And even like how we're thinking about our goals this year, we have, sure, we have financial targets, but we also have cultural culture targets and we have community targets. And it's like taking that mentality of you've got to have the trifecta in order for it to all work. You can't just focus on one and hope the others come figure it out. No, I agree. That's why like wellness should be your focus, right? Because then it all files under that and movement's part of it. Fitness is part of it. But, you know, stress is one of the biggest killers, right? So if you're stressing about your workouts, you're not having those rest days and also like having grace with yourself, it's just going to be like your, your workout actually may be hurting you, maybe spiking your cortisol, right? When you think it's the opposite. Um, and I think just being able to have that structure of what you know you're non-negotiable so you have that openness to make mistakes, to have a day that you don't think is going to go scheduled, miss a workout, and you know it's, it's going to be fine. Yeah, no, and and making being thoughtful about, okay, what types of things are going to strengthen my mental health? What types of things are going to strengthen my spirit? Like what what brings me peace from a spiritual perspective and putting more tangibles into those two buckets has been super helpful. Like I see a therapist regularly and I am like looking for ways to better communicate and respond to things and like regulate my emotions. And I think that's, that's really important versus just like trying to ignore some of those pieces. Um, and putting thought towards that has made a huge difference as I like look at my sort of wellness practice at large. For sure. And I think those pieces that people try to ignore are the hardest piece, right? Because it may be, you know, one, we talked about earlier, like you have to be intentional. And I think a lot of that comes with boundaries and saying no. And I think a lot of people haven't done that work. So then there might be pushback. So it's just knowing it's like, no, like this is where I want, who I want to be. So that you have to put in that work to get there. And it's like you said, it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's like, but you uncomfort, it's like brings you to the good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I'm sure you probably feel this way too. My biggest gratitude towards my experience building indie has been like how introspective it's forced me to become because I take it so seriously that people want to work here and want to be on this team. Like it's the greatest honor of my life. So How do I need to improve to be the best version of myself to be the leader and be the person calling the shots and really taking a look at yourself to say, okay, how can I be honest about my weaknesses? Like I'm not perfect. Um, And then be vulnerable enough to go work on those things, I think is, and share that with sometimes like my leadership team or people on the team. Like, yeah, this is really hard for me. I don't know exactly how to handle this situation. Um, So yeah, I just have gratitude. It's something I wasn't expecting would come with starting a business. And it's been like one of the coolest parts of it as well. Oh, I couldn't agree more because our job is to show up, right? And so it's like, how can we show up the best that our team needs, our patients, your clients need every day? And that puts in the work. You have to put in the work before or you're not going to be able to show up. And then we're not going to be able to do our job. I always talk about like being prepared it's not just like randomly showing up on Mondays. Like what did you do Sunday, Saturday, last year, it all builds. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think too, we know just the last thing we'll talk about being comfortable. Like, have you read Comfort Crisis? I have. You know, we're all in a state of like, you think being comfort is the goal, but it actually gets us nowhere and our bodies aren't meant to be comfortable. Like, and that's, and I think it's it's kind of shown, you know, across right now. Yeah, agree. But it's hard. Like I don't I don't want to sit here and say, like, oh, it's so easy to like look at your flaws and work on them. It's really hard. But I think I don't think that you can expect other people to be better around you unless you are trying to be better yourself. Like I like extreme ownership, but I think that accountability has to start with you. And there's a ripple effect to that. No, I agree, like you said, like things that you would never think about leading a company. Like I'm so thankful every single day because it does make you work on to be a better person, right? It's always going to be a journey. Like I'm a very quiet person. And now I like our number one thing too, is we have to communicate, right? 
and I will like anything personal, like I'm going to talk through a pro- uh, issue. I'm going to like really like d- dig in, which I would have never done before. But so it's just like the things we learn here, exactly so much gratitude. I'm like, I can't imagine the person I would be without, you know, being an optimal bio. Yeah, for sure. So I guess we could wrap it up because we went all over. I could keep talking about these things forever because it's our life, right? Like wellness is our life. Our work is our life and everyone's lives. There's many pieces. So it's like, how can you put it together? Uh, But also let it be, right? To just enjoy. So let's do some quick takes. What would you say is your uh, definition of wellness? I would say, this is a good question. My definition of wellness is finding the right things to keep, the right practices and and or things to keep a balance between your mind, body, and spirit. I agree. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay. I was like worried that you made it the full crossover. No, no I'm trying to be open, but it just doesn't, it just hits different. I, I agree. Um, I kn- walking or running? Running. Beach or mountains? This is hard because I really do love both, but I'm I'm like craving the mountains so much right now. I have to say mountains. And favorite podcast? I'm on a huge skinny confidential kick right now. It's like it, it was just like in my mix and now it's like I listen to every episode. It's at the top of my list. I love the guests they've had lately, so yeah, I'm dialed on that crew. Well, thank you so much for being uh, with uh, me today and our listeners. It was great to chat. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been a production of Optimal Bio. Optimal Bio is CEO Tyler Brandon, podcast host and partner Jim Baker, medical director Greg Brandon, production assistance by Core Media. Beth Grabencourt, Administrator, Kevin Duthu, Executive Producer. The podcast can be found on our website, OptimalBio.com, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Our theme song is Sunwave by Paradiso, provided by Epidemic Sound. Thank you.